Vanessa, we're glad to be back, everyone. And here are some of the latest ASEAN news for you. Isabel Ferreira, the wife of Timor Leste's Prime Minister, passed away on June 18, 2023. Isabel da Costa Ferreira died on June 18, 2023, at 48 minutes past 20 local time, in her residence, Meteau Dili, surrounded by her beloved ones and the medic team. Isabel suffered from a last stadium of an intestine cancer for almost a year and had undergone medical treatment in Singapore without any positive result, said the head of the medic team. Isabel is known as the wife of the actual Prime Minister of Timor Leste, Taur Matanruak. Both Isabel and Taur were blessed with three children. And Isabel was born on April 15, 1974, in Manufahi Municipality. She was the second from 13 children of Mateus Ferreira and Ana Flora de Jesus Ferreira. Once Timor Leste restored its independence, Isabel started to involve in various humanitarian, human rights, and political posts. She once held the position as the vice president for the Timor Leste Red Cross Association from 2002 to 2005. She was appointed as the human rights advisor to the Prime Minister in 2001 to 2006, and in 2006, she was appointed as the Vice Minister of Justice, as well as the member of the Commission Verrade y Amizade, or the Truth and Friendship Commission between the Indonesian and Timor Leste from 2005 to 2008, and from May 2012 till May 2017, she became the Timor Leste First Lady as his spouse, Taumatan Ruag, elected to become Timor Leste's president. Indonesian doctors and nurses protest proposed changes to healthcare laws. Hundreds of Indonesian doctors and nurses urged lawmakers to hold discussions on proposed revisions to healthcare laws that they said will dilute protections for medical practitioners. Dan juga meminta kepada wakil wakil rakyat. We demand the people's representatives here in this building to stop discussion on drafting the health bill under the omnibus law. Why? Because firstly, the lawmaking process was not transparent, and then there are many instances of people's interest that are still not included in the bill. Belum masuk di dalam sebuah rancangan undang-undang kesehatan saat ini. Kami juga dilibatkan dalam proses. Indonesia's parliament in February 2023 proposed a host of revisions to current healthcare laws, including making it easier for patients to bring criminal charges against healthcare workers for malpractice and allowing foreign talent to make up for staff shortages in the Southeast Asian country. The government has said the revisions are necessary to streamline the current laws. It is unclear when parliament will finalize the law. Thailand Pride Parade calls for same-sex marriage and gender identity rights. Thousands of LGBTQ plus people and their allies marched in the Pride Parade through the Thai capital Bangkok, calling for same-sex marriage and gender identity rights. The streets of central Bangkok were filled with rainbow flags and participants dressed in costumes, wearing elaborate makeup and carrying placards with the words Love is Love for the second official Pride March to be held in the Thailand. Lim Jaron Rand is in negotiations to form coalition government with Pu Thai, the second largest party which has won every election held in Thailand since 2001. <laughs> Thailand has one of Asia's most open and visible lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender communities, but many political activists say Thai laws and traditional institutions have yet to reflect changing social attitudes and still discriminate against LGBT people and same-sex couples. Bangkok Governor Chachart Sitipun said that over 50,000 people joined this year's Pride Parade, more than double the attendance of last year's event. Australian Prime Minister hopes to boost ties with Vietnam. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said during a state visit to Hanoi he wanted to elevate ties with Vietnam to form comprehensive strategic partnership. I'm pleased to announce that Australia will be stepping up our support for Vietnam's energy transformation with an important package of new overseas development assistance of $105 million for supporting sustainable infrastructure planning, for stimulating private investment 
in clean energy infrastructure. Over 50 years, Vietnam has transformed into a manufacturing power, one of the fastest growing countries in the world. Australia has been a willing partner in this transformation, delivering health, water and sanitation assistance, providing world-class infrastructure as Vietnam <coughs> opened its economy to the world, including, of course, the first bridge over the Mekong, symbolising a bridge between our two peoples. Vietnam's Prime Minister Pham Ninh Chin hosted a welcome ceremony for Albanese visiting the country on a two-day trip, his first visit to the Southeast Asian nation since taking office last year. After the ceremony, Albanese and Chin discussed in a bilateral meeting ways to reinforce political trust and cooperation between both sides, especially in the fields of security, defense, investment and climate change responses. Filipino durian farmers thanks RTP deal as it brings huge benefit to them. Filipino durian farmers are anticipating higher earnings this harvest season as they produce lands on the tables of Chinese families thanks to the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership RCEP agreement which took effect for the Philippines. Currently, China and the Philippines have established four key areas of cooperation under the RCEP in agriculture, infrastructure, energy and humanities. As a small farmer, this is the key process, the, 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 what you call this, the, the changing of our life to be uh, someday, somehow, we will be rich. All, all the farmers, small farmers, will be rich because of this uh, agreement. I'm now very much excited to, to, uh, to maintain our durian, to get the perfect... Uh, Plus a good quality of durian because we know that China is uh, is uh, uh, likes a uh, very uh, good quality of durian. Meanwhile, the president of the Durian Industry Association of Davao City said it will really improve farmers' lives. Uh, most of the farmers are really excited for this uh, for this big opportunity because it will really improve their lives, but due to this new big market, farmers has a livable wage, a livable uh, sales, so that they can support their family. In January this year, China and the Philippines signed a protocol on the plant quarantine requirements for the export of fresh durian from the Philippines to China. In April, China began importing Filipino durian, and Benjamin seized on the opportunity since April, his income has tripled. Nearly 4,000 Japanese food items face price hikes in June. Another wave of price hikes in Japan are expected to affect nearly 3,900 food items from June 1, which is more than five times of the food items registered last month. These food items cover flour products, condiments, eggs, among others. Flour products like instant noodles, which are around 1.69 US dollars, expanding 10%. About 500 kinds of instant noodles are expected to see price hikes. Next month, price of more than 1,500 types of bread may float up. So far, the total number of food items that Japan have raised prices this year and already confirmed to charge a higher mark within the year has reached more than 25,000. Now condiments surpassed processed foods for the first time, becoming the category with the most price increasing commodities, accounting for 27% of the total. In addition, impacted by the spread of the bird flu since last October, eggs in Japan are in short supply and the price of eggs has been rising for four consecutive months, which has driven the prices of related products such as mayonnaise. China and ASEAN economic cooperation brings hope to region and world economy. According to Chinese ambassador to ASEAN, Ho Yangqi, the fruitful economic and trade cooperation between China and ASEAN countries have brought hope to the region and the world economy in a post-pandemic recovery period. In a recent interview with the China Central Television, Hu said that China and ASEAN have kept steadily deepening their economic ties and maintained strong growth in trade even in the pandemic. 
as the two sites marked the first anniversary of their comprehensive strategic partnership and implementation of the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, RCEP, in 2022, the trade volume between China and ASEAN exceeded 6.52 trillion yuan or 917.1 billion US dollars, a year-on-year -year increase of 50% and making them the largest trading partner to each other for three consecutive years. Ho said the momentum of China-ASEAN trade is still going strong in 2023, with the first quarter posting a trade volume growth of 16.1% year-on-year. Looking forward, the ambassador said there remains great potential in China-ASEAN cooperation, hinting that ties between the two sides will reach new heights within new cooperation frameworks. Philippines ferry carrying more than 100 people catches fire at sea. Philippine Coast Guard official said a passenger ferry carrying 120 passengers and crew members caught fire off the coast of the central Philippines. A Coast Guard vessel was deployed to extinguish the flames and rescue people on board. Visuals from the Philippine Coast Guard showed parts of the ferry engulfed in flames while its personnel tried to hose down the flames. Coast Guard officials added all 120 people on board have been accounted for and no casualties were reported. In March, 29 people were killed after a passenger ferry caught fire in the seas of the southern province of Pasilan. The Philippines, an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands, has a poor record of maritime safety with vessels often overcrowded and many aging ships still in use. The RCP trade agreement enters into force for the Philippines. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership RCEP, enters into force for the Philippines allowing the Southeast Asian country to participate in the world's biggest free trade agreement. The Philippines was the last country to ratify the free trade agreement deal which eases market access to countries including 10 ASEAN members, China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. Some Chinese companies that have business contact with the Philippine customers had already prepared to export their products as soon as the RCEP came into force. According to the RCP agreement, the tariffs of some Chinese exports to the Philippines, such as plastic products, textile and apparel products, will gradually reduce to zero from 3 to 30 percent after a transition period. The Philippines has promised to open its market of more than 100 service sectors, especially maritime and air transportation, commerce, telecommunications, agriculture and manufacturing. To help more companies benefit from the trade deal, the RCP Shandong Enterprise Service Center has upgraded its service platform to cover more trade information. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll see you again sooner. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Bye.